In the game of hockey, there is the reality of a institution called the penalty box. And a player could be charged with slashing, roughing, boarding, fighting, uh, all kinds of uh, miscreant deeds. And he or she has to spend usually two minutes, but sometimes five minutes for a major, and sometimes a match penalty where he, he or she gets kicked out of the game. What we hear in the first reading, and I highly recommend you're going back to chapter 7 of the book of Job and hear him complain. He is in a penalty box, and he's in the penalty box and he didn't do anything wrong. He's just being tested by the devil and by God. Would he curse God if everything were taken away? And, and everything was. Farm, fields, flock, family, friends, all gone. And Job is in the penalty box. And what we hear in the reading today is, woe is me, life is a drudgery. I feel like a hireling that longs for the shade. Um, my life is a wind, it's going nowhere. And we probably have had Job moments where wondering what is the real meaning of life? And that can become, for Job it did, and it can become for us a preoccupation. Now there is a good word. It's, it, I did some um, remembering and some studying about the Latin word occupare, from which we get the word occupant and occupation and preoccupied. But the real meaning of occupare is to want to get to a place before somebody else gets there. So maybe I want to um, settle buying this house before somebody else gets it or a car or something. That's, that's occupare. I want to be there before anybody else. I want to possess it. So it's, and my, and my, it's my occupation. What I do is that which I perform when I have already been there. That's a, a beautiful word. And preoccupation. So Job is quite preoccupied and we have our preoccupations too. We have Jesus coming in the gospel and he comes with Simon and Peter, Simon, Peter, James, Andrew, and John, and they all come into Simon's house. Now, assuming that his wife is there and maybe children, but his wife's mother is there, his, his mother-in-law, and she is preoccupied with fever. She got, she has, been occupied by fever before Jesus gets there. That becomes quite a big theme in Mark's gospel, and we'll see it today in today's gospel. The urgency of Jesus to get to. If you remember in the gospel, uh, he heals Simon's mother-in-law and she lets go of her preoccupation and then gets into a, an occupation of service. That, that the real healing from being preoccupied is the occupation of distribution, of helping others. Jesus didn't say, okay, I've, I've cured you, now you care for me. No, it's a, it's a natural thing. The freedom from is a freedom for. A freedom from being preoccupied of something being there before I am really there. That would be a preoccupation. So that the gospel is how, how can Jesus be seen as someone going around trying to reoccupy that which was preoccupied. I know I'm playing with the word, but it, it, it helps. So that Jesus... Uh, 
heals the mother-in-law, and they probably have a meal, you know. And then early in the morning, Jesus goes out to pray. And we often wonder, oh, how was Jesus' prayer? What was that about? And in my reflection about it, Jesus uh, lets the Spirit occupy him. The Spirit of God that he received at his baptism, is he's no longer preoccupied with Simon's mother-in-law. He is getting free from distractions to get occupied again, reoccupied by the Spirit. He's quiet and receptive, but it gets interrupted by the apostles saying, hey, everybody's looking for you. You know, you did such a great job yesterday that they brought a whole bunch of people who are quite occupied with uh, sickness and disease and leprosy and all. Can you come and do your thing for them? And Jesus does a very strange thing. He says, no, we have to go to other villages. We have to go. I, I'm already occupied. I want to be there before other spirits get there. And when he gets these places, other spirits, demons, leprosy, so he reoccupies. He casts out preoccupants and lets the healing life that leads to service, generosity, distribution, relationship. And that's his mission. He is preoccupied with occupying humanity, us. Now, what is, it, what is all this for us? We can get in the penalty box of shame. Uh, it, we can be occupied. A spirit is there of regret. As maybe a hockey player, when she or he is sitting there saying, okay, I'm, I'm not going to cross-check anymore. I'm not going to knock that person uh, with a high stick, hit him in the face, slashing. I'm not going to do that anymore. But right now, I have to consider what spirits, this is the hockey player, what spirits of competition and violence have occupied me that I want to have another spirit of competition and sharing my gifts and, and teamwork. I'm going to let that spirit occupy me. So we have moments in our own penalty box of regret, shame, inferiority, um, injury, having been hurt. I'm going to sit here and pout and cry, and, um, and I'm not going to be service-oriented, not going to help anybody. I'm in my own penalty box, and I'm occupied by it. It's, that spirit is within me. And then and it might be, I was really hurt maybe. It, it, it really happened. But how long do I let my regret or my revenge take possession of me? That spirit got there before the spirit of Jesus. And at the Eucharist and in our own prayer, Jesus is knocking at the door saying, as he said to um, Simon's mother-in-law, arise, let go of Maybe I can't let go of the emotion. That's true. Emotions linger, especially if we've been hurt. But we don't have to sit in the penalty box of regret or poor me. Not if we've received the Eucharist well. Not if we've received the relationship with Jesus in our own prayer. He's always saying to us, I want to occupy. I am here before any other spirits get to you. And I, I want to get to you to let, help you be freed from spirits that have occupied you because I want to occupy you. And I want your occupation to be an, uh, a sharing of helping other people out of their penalty box. Spouses, children, relatives, neighbors. Our work is to 
extend the occupation of God's grace into the penalty boxes of others.